Hello! Can I get any closer to this? Probably see my bald spot there, it's okay. Um, section 2.2, rates of change. We're going back to 2.2, it is okay. Um, your homework practice, whatever is over there. We're gonna find the average velocity on an interval. We're gonna find the instantaneous velocity at a point. So now we're gonna talk about uh, position functions, average velocity, so some um, rates of change, a lot of that other good stuff today. All right, uh, so the function s that gives the position of an object as a function of time t is called the position function. Okay, we've talked about that uh, in the past. If the object changes position over a period of time, which is called delta t, the average velocity is given by the formula. So the average velocity is really the delta s over the delta t, which is the change in position over the change in time. That's what average velocity is. So again, time and position. Okay, pretty self-explanatory, I think. I mean, we'll go on from there, but I don't think you need to know much else from there. Um, so for instance, if I have a tennis ball that's dropped from a height of 100 feet, we have this equation. So this is the position function, negative 16t squared plus 100. Um, you've done these in Algebra 2 and you've done these in Calc A, B as well. Where S is measured in feet and T is measured in seconds. So find the average velocity over the time interval. So what I want to do is I want to find the average velocity. So I'm going to say, okay, well this is really S of 2 minus S of 1 over 2 minus 1. So the average velocity kind of really looks like slope, right? Well, yeah, it does. Uh -huh. So S of 2, if I plug a 2 in there, 2 squared is 4. It's negative 64. Negative 64 plus 100 is uh, 36. Minus, if I plug in 1, I get uh, 84. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, 84. Yep, 84. Over 1, and this is going to be negative 48. Over 1, that's why I don't need to put the 1. But then feet per second. So negative 48 feet per second. That means the ball or yeah the tennis ball in this case at um, over the interval from 1 to 2 is dropping negative 48 feet per second so it's on the down um, side of, of it's coming down right the ball is coming down um, for some reason for some reason I don't have um, another one in here but I'm gonna put this in here number two um, it's from 1 to 1 1.5 all right. Um, this is you have to probably have to type that into your notes or or, or write it in. I, it's not written there for some reason. Um, but if I plug in, so this is really s of 1.5 minus s of 1 over 1.5 minus 1. S of 1.5. Um, oh man, I gotta get my calculator out on this one. Hold on here. Let's get my handy dandy calculator. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it, wait for it. Oh, there we go. That was cool. Uh, okay, so let's go here. Um, so, oh man, negative 16 times 1.5 squared is negative 36. Okay, that's cool. Negative 36 um, plus 100. Negative 36 plus 100, so that's going to be... Uh, 64 um, minus s of 1 s of 1 is 84 so 84 over 0. 0.5 so this is negative 20 over 0. 0.5 so this is really going to be negative 40 feet per second so on that interval which is only a half second interval it's falling negative 40 feet per second or it's falling 40 feet per second whereas the first one over that one second interval is falling 48 feet per second. Okay, um, so a particle is moving along the x axis with the following positions in time during the table value. Approximate the average velocity of the particle when t is equal to 5. So because we're approximating at t is equal to 5, t is equal to 5 is falling in right in there. Um, but Alright, well, whatever. This is just another problem that you don't have in your notes. So, or 
No, that you do have in your notes, that I didn't have in my notes. So, okay, uh, that's fine. So, because t is equal to 5 right there, all right, um, I need to approximate the value. So, I have to use what's around it. So, because I know 4 and I know 6, I have to then use and find the slope between those two points. So, I'm going to say 20 minus 13 over 6 minus 4 is 7 over 2. And so, that's 3 and a half uh, feet per second. So, that is the average velocity when t is equal to 5. That's pretty self-explanatory, I think. I, you know, you don't want to use 9 and 1 because that's not very approximate. It's going to be like, it's going to give you a value, but it's not going to be a nice number that might or might not be because it's a very far distance. You want to find numbers that are close to 5, and because we have above, which is 6, and below, which is 4, we'll use those two. So because the average velocities are negative, this is dealing with a tennis ball. This indicates that the tennis ball is moving downward. We talked about that. Okay, um, we did talk about that because it's going down, right? So it's already reached its apex, its maximum point. So now it's on its downward spiral, just like I am in life. Um, okay, position equation versus velocity. So as we decrease the interval used to find the average velocity, we can find the instantaneous velocity. Instantaneous velocity is the derivative, derivative, whereas the average velocity is slope. So average velocity is slope, and the instantaneous velocity is equal to the derivative. Please remember that. I think one of the theorems that we're going to be getting into is probably mean value theorem, um, deals with those two, okay? So if I have the limit as delta t approaches zero, so that's the change in time, we have um, all that stuff, which is s prime of t, which is equal to v of t. Remember, we have s of t, we have v of t, which is equal to s prime of t, and we have a of t, which is equal to v prime of t, which is equal to s double prime of t, right? Acceleration, velocity, standard position. In other words, the velocity is the derivative. I think we already knew that already. That's fantastic. Of the position function. So velocity is a vector, which means it has direction. So velocity can be positive, negative, or zero. Speed, on the other hand, is the absolute value of velocity and cannot be negative. So I can have my function, say, down here, and if that's negative velocity, that's great. But it cannot be negative speed. So I would have to take the absolute value of that number and say the speed is 47 instead of negative 47, okay, as um, in terms of uh, velocity, because velocity can be negative, okay? Um, I think we're good there. Let's go on. Here's an example. At time is equal to zero, a diver jumps off a platform diving board that is 32 feet above the water. The position of the diver is given by that function, where s is measured in feet and t is in seconds. When does the diver hit the water? So what I have to do is I'm actually going to take this, because this is the function of him jumping, I'm going to set that equal to zero. So part a is negative 16t squared plus 16t plus 32 is equal to zero. I'm going to factor out a negative 16, and I'm going to see what happens. So I get t squared minus t plus 2 is equal to zero. This goes away, doesn't matter. I'm going to factor this out. I get t minus 2, t plus 1 is equal to zero. So t is equal to 2 seconds. Okay, now you can very easily plug that into your calculator. Um, if I can pull it up here. And you can graph it, go to y equals, plug it in, you know, and then go to your graph and then find out where it touches the x-axis. And you could do that too. Um, but I just did it, you know, probably a lot faster actually because um, I used my head. Uh, so that's that one. So let's do part B. What is the diver's velocity at impact? Well, velocity is the derivative of, of position. So I have to find the derivative of that. So v of t is equal to negative 32t plus 16 at impact. So I got to find out uh, impact is where it's at 2 seconds, so I got to plug that in. So I get negative 32 times 2 plus 16. 
I get negative 60, oops, 64 plus 16, so that's negative 48 feet per second. So that's his velocity, that is V of 2, and negative 48 feet per second. All right, um, what is their speed? Well, the speed, that's pretty simple, is just 48 feet per second because it's the absolute value of velocity. So velocity is positive, the speed's positive, the velocity is negative, and speed is still positive. Okay, great. Uh, let's do part C, I don't know, somewhere up here so we don't have to scroll down. When does the diver stop moving upward and start their descent? So that is when the velocity, okay, um, so if our, gra let's look at the graph here. This graph is going to look like, boop, and uh, at, uh, let's see, start moving upward and start the descent. That's going to be right there when it hits the maximum point. So maximum point occurs when the V of T is equal to zero. Okay, we haven't quite talked about that yet, but you should know that from last year. Okay, velocity is equal to zero, so I'm going to take negative 32T plus 16 is equal to zero. And I end up solving that as I get t is equal to one half seconds. So at a half second is when that person jumped, reached their apex, and then started coming back down. That's the highest point that they jumped. If you wanted to find out that point, you could just plug it in and find that out. It's not asking you to do that, but I'm just saying you could if you wanted to. Okay, um, I'm thinking that we're done. I don't think there's any more. It's fantastic. Uh, again, shouldn't be anything new. Um, do those practice problems as much as you need and um, should be good to go. But other on the other, I'll see you on the other side. Deuces. My gooses.